soft robots that can repair themselves after damage could redefine reliability and sustainability in robotics. Joining us now is Professor Brent Brandobrobs, whose work on self-healing materials making robots more durable, efficient, and environmentally friendly. Professor Brandobrobs, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Uh, so what inspired your work on self-healing uh, materials and how did it uh, make soft robots more reliable? Yes, robots are very complex and when they're damaged or they need to do a complex repair, which is of course taking a lot of time, or they end up on the increasing pile of e-waste. And so that's why we rethought we need to generate breakthroughs to solve this. And that's why we were starting to develop self-healing materials. So uh, can you explain how these self-healing materials work and what makes them different from the traditional polymers used in robotics? Yes. So our self-healing material is a polymer, so a plastic, and the traditional materials can be categorized in two. On one hand, you have the thermoplasts, hey, that are long polymer chains, a bit like a spaghetti, and the advantage is that you can heat it up and give it new forms, for example, to 3D print or recycle the material. But the mechanical properties of the material can be improved by in that spaghetti making crosslinks. And then you have a network polymer, and then you can give it good properties like make it very rigid, like bacillate, or very elastic, for example, like the rubbers. But the disadvantage is that you cannot recycle them and you cannot heat them up to make it a liquid. And that's a challenge. And our self-healing materials take the best of the two worlds. So it's a network polymer with nice mechanical properties, but the links can open and close. So in the bonds, if you make a cut, the bonds will open. And when you close the wound, then the material will repair. So the mechanical properties after healing are the same as before the damage took place. How does this technology contribute to the durability and sustainability of the soft robots? Yeah. So it increases the sustainability in many ways. And the first one, if there is damage, then the material can heal itself and the robot can go back into action. Moreover, we can also upgrade and modify the robot. We can, if a part is missing, for example, we can heal a new part on it. If the material is too damaged, then, uh, and it's not needed anymore, in contrast to the human body, we cannot grow new materials. So that's a, still a disadvantage. So if there is too much damage or you don't need the part anymore, then we can both mechanically recycle it. For example, we can bring it in a liquid state to print new material. We can also chemically recycle it, meaning we can go back to the monomers and give new mechanical properties to the material. Moreover, we're not using fossil oils, but biosources and also investigating biodegradability. If anyway, the part would end up in nature, that it can degrade. So it's sustainability on different levels, not only lifetime extension, but also recycling the material. Can you tell us a little bit more, like what kind of uh, in real world use that do this technology uh, you see in the future? Yes, so we developed the breakthroughs on the self healing material and now we're maturing the technology so we can go from a lab to the real world. We will not be able to develop a completely self healing robot in the close future. I think it will be gradually replacing components, for example, the grippers of humanoids, tires of uh, mobile vehicles. I often go by bike to work and then I had flat tires, which is annoying but it's also more waste and so inside a commercial tire we put a self-healing layer so when you have a puncture when you take out the nail the tire heals itself and we would have not have noticed that there was a, a puncture yeah so it's a much more sustainable material we can give it different mechanical properties but also electrical properties so we can make conductive self-healing materials so we can embed also sensors in the material which can sense for example contact but also for example detect if a damage took place. I think the materials will gradually be introduced in such humanoids or other forms of robots starting especially with the materials which are in contact with the environment for example we need soft fingers to ma manipulate fragile objects that they're for example self-healing we also need to develop protective material, a skin for the robot, uh, for avoid, 
impacting contact, for example, or collisions, and that are then soft materials, which can be damaged and then with our material be healed. So I think gradually we can see how we can introduce those materials in the next generation of robots. Really looking forward to this next generation robots with such a powerful materials. Thank you for sharing with us today. We hope to see you next year. Thank you. Thank you.